Our third fastest qualifier for Sunday's 15th annual Ford EcoBoost 400 is Joey Logano. And Joey drives the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Penske Racing. Uh, Joey, talk about your qualifying effort out there. How's your race car and your outlook for this weekend? Um, pretty good. Uh, Shell Penzoil Ford was uh, fast right off the truck. Um, I think we were fifth quick uh, in race trim right off the truck, and a lot of cars were in qualifying trim. So uh, anytime that happens, you know you got a, a really good race piece. And uh, really was a little bit surprised when we switched over to qualifying trim. There wasn't as much speed in qualifying trim as there was in race trim. Um, but Todd and, and all the guys on the team did a great job. Uh, they made a couple little adjustments here and there and um, kind of made guesses on where the track was going to go. And uh, we were able to pick up from, I think, 10th at the end of practice to a third here. So, um, yeah, third's great. You know, I just, you always, I want to be first, you know. So it's just it's a little aggravating because you're so close to it. But um, anytime you're mad with third is, is a good thing. Questions now for Joey. If you have one, raise your hand. Alan has one right there in the middle. If we could get Alan a microphone, please. Thank you. Uh, Alan, come on to NASCAR.com. I saw you on pit road having a lighthearted moment with the 20 guys. Uh -huh. What is it like looking back now, knowing that, I mean, Matt had a career year and you left that team and you had a career year. Uh, now that, you know, one year has gone by, what, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, changes are always good when, when you know, both parties uh, make out good. And obviously both of them, uh, both of us are doing uh, well. You know, they, they've made a huge step, obviously. And, um, you know, uh, myself with this 22 team have, have, have done a, a decent job. You know, since the chase started, we've uh, we've had fast race cars. Um, you know, we had a, a tough start, and we've been kind of digging our way out of a hole, which we've done all year. Uh, we put ourselves in a hole in the beginning of the season, and we worked our way into the chase. Um, now coming this uh, weekend, I feel like we can get up to six in points um, with probably winning this thing, <laughs> which I need to do. But, uh, you know, that's why I set my goals. I set my goals really high, and... Um, I feel like I got a car could, that can do it. So um, hope we can tune in a little bit more tomorrow. And uh, you know, obviously we're starting close enough front to uh, to make it happen. So I'm excited about it. I got a fast car, and uh, we'll try to work our way up the points the best we can. No, I, I don't look at it that way at all. Um, I, I look at you know look at my own deal, and uh, think about um, what we've done this year and what we can do to make it better next year. Um, Anytime I start worrying about other cars and other people and stuff like that, it doesn't make my race car go faster. Let's go over here to the right, Lewis. Yes, uh, Lewis Frank Speed Week. Uh, if I got the ca if I got the schedule right, you've got you'll have gone out at all different times except perhaps tomorrow's practice at three o'clock. Um, how how do you prepare for a race where you've gone out mm -hmm. at so many different times, different conditions? That's a great question. Um, it, it's difficult. Uh, luckily for us, I came down here and did the nationwide test here a few weeks ago um, when the Hendrick guys and Gibbs guys were down here with their cup cars. Uh, we were down here testing the 22 nationwide car, and um, that's when you get to see how the track changes throughout the whole day, right? Because you start at, I think we started at 9 and went to 6, 6 or 7.30, I think we went to. Um, so you get to see this, the track get hot middle of the day, and then as it cools down into the dark and what the track does. And um, that's some valuable notes for us to, to have. And I'm not going to tell you what it does, but it, uh, you know, there, there is some change there. And obviously when you get dirty air, um, that's going to change it even more. So um, it's stuff we fight every week, you know, where the track's going to be the next day. You know, is the temperature going to um, cool off or heat up and which way do we think it's going to go? And that's why we all take notes because uh, we race way too many times to remember all this in our minds, so we take it all, all these notes down and uh, try to look through them and, and see what the trends were that we fought and which way we thought the track went uh, maybe last year and um, you know, come up with a good game plan what we want to do leading into Sunday and as the race goes and the, and the night comes. Other questions for Joey? Dwight and then Jenna. Uh, Dwight from RacingTech.com. Uh, uh, Joey, obviously you, you started racing at a, at a real young age. So do you think that gave you, and you, you've been a rookie a lot of times, uh, do you think <laughs> that gave you a, an opportunity to, to uh, do well in the uh, chase? Starting young? Um, I don't know, I don't feel young anymore, but uh, <laughs> it's, um, I, don't, I don't know if it, it's really changed what, well, making the chase, uh, if that helps me or hurts me or, or whatever, I don't, I don't think it really makes a difference uh, now that I'm in the chase. Uh, but I do think having the amount of experience that I have at the age that I am is an advantage. Um, I feel like that is good. Um, but if it took a while to gain this experience and understand what's going on and how to 
uh, you know, basically gain that maturity level uh, to what I need to, to, you know, be a sprint car uh, driver. So um, I feel like knowing what I know now at the age I am is great. I feel like I'm in a good spot knowing that. Um, and I'm never where I want to be because everyone in this series is always getting better. Um, but I feel like I'm on the you know, the right track and in the same ballpark as everyone now and of the, of the lead pack of where I need to be. And uh, just keep making steps from there. Go to Jenna and then over here to Jeff. Jennifer, AP. I saw on Twitter you're engaged. Congratulations. I am? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if you did, – did you break as many hearts as like a Casey Kane engagement would, would go? I have no clue. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I don't think I'm that good looking, but that's why uh, that's why I popped the question. I'm not going to do any better. I knew that. And uh, she's no, she's a, <laughs> she's a she's a great girl. She's uh, um, I've you know been dating her for a, wa a long time, and she's really actually uh, my first kiss and the first girl I ever went out with. So um, kind of cool to uh, have that relationship for a long time, and you know figured I'd go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I've known, I've known her for a long time, and it's uh, at the ice rink. I was a Zamboni driver, and she was a concession stand girl, and so I, I cleaned the ice, and she sold French fries. So, how are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, she uh, she had a like a two thousand something Jeep that I felt like she was probably gonna die in, and um, she really likes Thunderbirds. And uh, which is funny because she's probably the only girl in her 20s that really loves Thunderbirds. So I upgraded her to a Ford and uh, um, surprised her with that and, and the ring and the whole nine. So it's kind of a cool thing. Kind of unique, I guess. I asked her if I can just get a car. <laughs> I feel like you get more money or more for your money with that. <laughs> Congratulations, Joy.